Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the update video, and uh, I'm recapping basically what was released in the update, my thoughts on it. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen it. I'm usually one of the late uh, people to the update scene, but I always am sure to you know watch videos, uh, try out some of the new stuff, and uh, give a bit of a more educated opinion than if I had just uh, kind of jumped the gun. So anyway. Uh, here we go with the update things. I'm going to recap them, and uh, as I do so, I'll give my opinion on basically how it's going to affect War Town Hall 8 through you know Town Hall 11, basically. So anyway, let's get started. A lot of new cool stuff to get to. I'm um, just going to kind of go through a list in no order of stuff I, I have written down. So we have we have the new troops. Uh, they've added Town Hall 10, the Miner, and Town Hall 9, Baby Dragon. Uh, as far as the Miner goes, it looks like interesting troop it's something that we haven't seen uh much of it's a troop that avoids walls but uh not defensive targeting uh looks like it uh takes up pretty low troop space i think i haven't checked that specifically uh but it, it, it pops beneath uh the ground while it's traveling from building to building so it can't be damaged in between uh you guys might know the miner from clash royale uh, not really a high dps troop and i, I don't think it is in clash either but it's definitely something that could be used uh, kind of as a utility, meaning that one or two of them just to do certain jobs for your attack. But maybe on a bigger scale, it's really something I don't know how it's going to be used. Um, I have, I've seen gameplay of it. I haven't actually used it myself. But I think it's something that could be uh, more of a utility rather than actually the main part of an attack. I think it could be a good support troop. So we'll see how it gets used. Um, but I don't think anything too uh, groundbreaking, if I can throw a pun in there. Um, as far as the baby dragon goes, that looks like it's going to be something that's going to be cool. Uh, and maybe just for utility purpose also, these two troops don't seem like anything too big. But I think that the baby dragon is a substitute for a wizard because it does pretty good DPS, has solid hit points, and it's an air troop. So instead of using minions, you can now use a baby dragon. It does take up 10 troop space, but I think you can get um, you know, a funnel created very easily and uh, be certain you'll get it. You can do it a few trades for defenses, uh, stuff like that. So I think it could work. And who knows, maybe we'll see Town Hall, because uh, it unlocks, let's check this, it unlocks a Town Hall 9. So you can see, instead of the dragon attacks, you used to see maybe baby dragon attacks. But remember, it does uh, do better on its own. It has that little rage aura when it's by itself, not by other baby dragons. So just using one of them could be a good utility as well. But I think more than the minor, it has the potential to uh, really expand to uh, being the main troop in an attack, probably at Town Hall 9, but who knows? We, I mean, these things just came out. It could be a big thing at Town Hall 10. I don't think so, but uh, it's something cool, and uh, these troops are n new. They're really adding some uh, new dimensions to the game, and the more troops there are, kind of the more you can uh, do you know, cool things, customize your attacks, uh, find new ways to use these in little utility ways, save troop space, uh, get a job done, just all kinds of cool things you can think up uh, so that's very uh, good to see, and uh, it's been a while. We had the bowlers, but uh, these are definitely also good additions to see. A lot of new troops for us to play around with and figure out what to do with, keeping the game fresh. Uh, moving along, though, let's get to the new spells they added. Uh, they added the clone spell for Town Hall 10, which is a elixir spell that actually takes up four spots, so double what a rage or a heal or any normal elixir spell takes up. And then they added the... Uh, skeleton spell which is a town hall 9 dark spell and uh, it's basically like a poison spell except uh, you drop it down it'll deploy like six or seven skeletons depending on the level uh, doesn't trigger traps doesn't lure CC troops but uh, I think it's something that could be used and uh, as far as that spell goes you know you bring two uh, poisons a lot of the time but really sometimes you're only going to use one so I think it could be used to put down to distract a single targeted inferno, distract a hero, just something to uh, basically buy your troops some time for creating a funnel, you know, for letting wall breakers into the base, just all kinds of new stuff will definitely help me make more clan war mini tips with all these new things out, but uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's something that could be used as a utility like the other new stuff, just on a small scale to try to uh, kind of boost your attack up a little bit, because oftentimes you don't need that second dark spell. So uh, even if it doesn't add much, it definitely adds something to your attack. Um, as far as the clone spell goes, I don't know. It could be really powerful. It could not be. Uh, I'm not sure. It, it doesn't clone the biggest troops. You have to upgrade it to clone bigger troops and bigger troops. 
but um, it looks like it could be powerful. You do have to drop out two regular elixir spells, so you definitely have to make it worth it. But I think doubling that troop power could be something that we could see uh, being very powerful. And uh, let's say if you bring, you know, a jump and a rage and maybe a heal, you can bring that clone spell uh, as your other four spots, not counting the dark spells, at like Town Hall 10. So you can still uh, have sufficient spells to, uh, you know, use on your Valks or whatever, but still be able to use that clone spell and probably get pretty good value. But we'll see. It's something that I think could be very powerful or could not be. Um, I don't know if they can predict how well it's going to uh, be, how much it's going to be used, how powerful it'll be until it really comes out into the game. So we'll see. Okay, um, a few new things here. Uh, we have um, some upgrades and balancing. Uh, Town Hall 11, there's, new, there's a level 14 cannon, uh, level 4 Lava Hound, and level 7 Balloon. Uh, the cannon's kind of a miniature nerf to ground attacks, I guess, to Valks, a little more DPS, which I think is good. And then the Lava Hound and the Balloon are interesting because it's a Town Hall 11. And uh, I think right now a Town Hall 11, they're, they're getting to, to being able to 3-star their Town Hall 11s. It's something that they're working on. I don't think it's very consistently done. In most wars, typically the Town Hall 11s 3-star the Town Hall 10s and the Town Hall 10s 2-star the Town Hall 11s. But uh, if, if the air becomes a better option at Town Hall 11, you could see some attempts at other Town Hall 11s uh, using air attacks for 3 stars. Other than that, I don't think it'll affect the game much. I think people will still use Valks at Town Hall 11 to 3-star Town Hall 10s. But um, keep in mind, you can put this in your CC now at Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10. So there is that trickle down for Balloons and Lava Hounds being that much stronger, especially Lava Hounds. People don't really bring Balloons unless they're like a Town Hall 8, but that's pretty much already broken. Uh, but yeah, you can now bring a level 4 Lava Hound as a Town Hall 9, which is pretty powerful, adding another buff. But I think Air does need that buff to keep up with Valks at this point. And uh, attacking is becoming pretty powerful. A new defensive building might be in order, but this should balance things out a little bit and possibly add that three-star gain to Town Hall 11 that it doesn't quite have yet. Uh, for whatever reason, probably the Eagle Artillery being pretty brutal. Um, but anyway, Town Hall 7 Plus, they added <coughs> Spring Trap levels. I think not going to be that big of a deal, but another miniature nerf to ground troops that can take out more hogs. Uh, I think multiple Valks now. So uh, something good there. I'm all for it. And then Town Hall 10 Plus, the Bowler housing space reduced to 6. I think this is actually kind of a low-key, big, uh, big thing. I think that bowlers could be the next thing, a, a bowler walk specifically, and I'll tell you why. The healers do a very, very, I think it's almost like half reduced heal to healer, or to heroes. So the queen walk, you're not getting the full value of your healers, but you shouldn't have to bring four. If you bring bowlers, you can bring two or three, and that's that's huge, because you can save that you know 14 troop space if you only bring three, and I've tried it. Three healers will keep up the bowlers under a number of point defense, especially if the point defense lock on to different bowlers, because then it's like one point defense on each bowler, so it's it's huge. Um, the the healing value you get when you use bowlers, and I think that with there being six troop space, I can drop down a CC of five bowlers and just let them do work. It's it's pretty pretty big in my opinion. I think bowler walks are going to be something you're going to see more, and uh, especially with the uh, ability to practice it more. I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but anyway. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty uh, big thing. We're going to see some more bowlers coming out. Uh, some people might disagree, but that's just my opinion. We'll see how it works out. But I think that was good. I think bowlers taking up 8 troop space was a little much. I think this will help get them to be relevant at Town Hall 10 and 11. So anyway, um, that is that. Let's move on to just kind of the last few things. And I might be skipping over some of the little things. So let me know if I missed something that's kind of important in the comments. I think I have everything covered, but... Uh, you can drop a comment letting me know what you think about these things and any other things uh, that I might have left out. But anyway, uh, the big thing is friendly challenges. I think that's everyone agrees is the most uh, has the most weight as far as the changes go. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what this is going to do to the game. When you think about it, it's basically a what people who are modding had for a while. The only difference is you can't do it on a specific base to get an advantage in a war. So you can now attack any player's base um, free of charge of any troop space. Just whatever troops you have, you can just use. Uh, you don't lose those troops, they stay with you, so no cost really. 
and you can practice on any base. They have the cooldown, the 24 hour cooldown, so you can't see the, or so you can't copy the opponent's base, and you can't scout anymore on prep day. So the that makes it so it's only a day long time period, which will know the base. Uh, that way, the 24 hour cooldown uh, covers the entire war, so you can't copy the opponent's base. But anyway, uh, what this is gonna do to just attacking in general, I think it's gonna be pretty significant. We're gonna see people. Um, coming up with all kinds of new crazy things because instead of two attacks now you can have you know 50 if you want in a day and uh, you can choose what base you want to attack based on uh, you know telling your clan mate hey can you make can I try out this base that you have or that base um, kind of experimenting around and after a war is over you can say hey can you copy that opponent's base and then a day later you can try that base and see what would have three started and I mean it's a day later because you have to wait for the cooldown but any base you attack in war, you can get a clan mate to say, and you can do it vice versa because no one wants to build a base just for someone else. So it can be kind of a mutual thing. You build the opponent's base in one of your slots, and you can go in and uh, see how you could have three starred it. Keep tweaking it, almost like modding, but after the fact. So um, modding definitely had some uh, innovation. We, it, I mean, a lot of different attack strategies came from modders. I think this is something I've discussed a lot, and. Uh, a little bit controversial, but I think everyone agrees to that to some extent that modding has uh, innovated the game a little bit, and I think this is going to keep the innovation without the cheating. And uh, I think that's what everyone wants. You're going to see people using miners, bowlers, uh, the baby dragon, all that new stuff, and all the stuff we already have. Uh, clone spell also, the uh, skele the skeleton spell or whatever it's called. Uh, but that's you're going to start seeing that being used in crazy ways, and uh, the game is really going to. Uh, lurch forward as far as innovation goes and I think that's going to be something uh, that's really cool now it's also everything in the game beforehand you had to wait for and by the way the, the healer AI I'm not liking it's the healers are leaving the queen more so just notice that in the attack as I was talking uh, but anyway um, you're gonna oh, I lost my train of thought here uh, what was I saying oh everything in the game has been wait for this wait for that uh, you know, wait for troops, wait for troops for war, wait to for your upgrades. This is immediate. You can attack a base, then attack it again with the exact same troops, no cost, just boom, right away. And that's something that's cool. We haven't seen that dimension of Clash of Clans yet. The immediate attack, no cost. And I think they've implemented it in a very strategic way. And um, originally they said they weren't going to have the cooldown. I have to be suspicious if this was a way to kind of trick the war people into thinking they made the change for them. Because, I mean, super sell, smell, super sell are smart people, and uh, they they know that, that this was going to be hugely complained about by the war community when they announced this, but said that there was going to be no cooldown so you could copy your opponent's bases. I think they knew that there was going to be that backlash in the war community for sure, uh, but I think they intentionally left out the part of having the cooldown to make it look like they were adapting to the war community, and I think that's kind of a tricky way to do it to show that they're you know listening and that they're really taking into account what people are saying especially from the world community which has always been vocal about having the changes that they want to be made and uh, you know what that is what it is but I think I can call it, try to call their bluff there I'm not sure I might be wrong this kind of a you know conspiracy theory type thing but I, I think there's definitely that possibility that they were uh, that they were gonna they implemented this with the delayed announcement about the cooldown to uh, to try to look a little bit better, like they're really taking into account what they're saying. But anyway, uh, I'm not going to go off too much on that, just kind of a theory I have. Uh, you guys can decide for yourself. But anyway, uh, th the friendly challenges is definitely going to be pretty uh, revolutionary to the game. Uh, I've already said this a lot, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using it, and uh, it, it's something that I think is going to... <laughs> Uh, allow people that weren't part of the war community before to kind of discover these new attack strategies because a lot of times you know in two attacks people don't want to waste time playing them too much and they kind of fall back into using the uh, less three star ish strategies whatever you want to call them um, it could be with whatever troops but they're not playing it out to get this three star as well as they could and I think people now uh, because it doesn't cost any troop space or any it doesn't cost any time or troops to do the attack as long as you have it trained up beforehand uh, people are gonna really start experimenting more it won't just be the war community 
the war community will obviously jump ahead, but I think even some of the uh, less hardcore war people will uh, start to uh, use these new features and at least become somewhat proficient at, at three-starring, uh, especially at Town Hall 9 and maybe even at Town Hall 10. So I think it'll trickle down definitely to some of the uh, to some of the non-hardcore war clans, more of the casual war clans, we'll see that happen as well. But one last thing about this friendly challenge, it's something that uh, the only thing I'm thinking about it that's not as positive is that it just takes a, a lot more time now because you have to you know, go on if you want to get your base checked out to have people attack your base, see how it works, uh, make the changes, and uh, for your own attacks, you know, go on, do the attacks, tweak them, do them again. Um, it's, it is a bit of more of a time commitment than what we had in the past, so uh, it's something you're going to have to put in time to do, and uh, I'm busy. I'm going to do my best to try to uh, get get these attacks done and try to improve my own skills and develop new stuff, but uh, it, it, I mean, it's definitely going to be more of a time commitment for people that do want to do this, and uh, I'll do my best. I think a lot of people in One Hive are really excited to try to innovate, get the newest uh, cutting-edge strategies made, which is awesome. We need people to do that, but uh, for some people, possibly myself, might sit back a little bit more, see what people are doing, and kind of see if we can use the strategies that are already being created. But I don't know. I'm going to do my best to try to get these in, uh, do, some, do some of these practices, see if I can innovate and get some new uh, strategies going. So anyway... Uh, time commitment, but I think everyone's excited about it, and that doesn't really change the fact that it's going to be awesome for the game, and I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, so uh, just a few notes to add at the end here. I uh, kind of got over all the big stuff, I think, but uh, we do have the base editor that has been added. I went over this in an entire video just because I make bases. It was so awesome to see that. Something I'm really excited about seeing in the game, and uh, has already helped me make bases so I'm looking forward to continuing to use that and to gain bases cranked out a little bit faster and you guys will see that in the live base builds and stuff uh, as I do those later on. Um, what else do we have? We have the new graphics so they've added you can see the wizard there the shooting of the wizard and the wizard tower it doesn't look as cool as in my opinion I think that wasn't really needed but they, they like changing up the graphics every once in a while uh, so sometimes you see them change up the walls uh, sometimes they change up other things so uh, they chose to change up just a few different graphics. The clan chat, that was uh, something that was changed. And it takes getting used to. I think, I don't really tend to like the changes in graphics usually, but I think um, once you get used to them, that they seem pretty cool, so you don't notice them. It's just right at the beginning that it, you know, people don't like change naturally. So anyway, uh, it's something that <laughs> I'm getting used to, but uh, eventually I won't even notice it, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. And I uh, hope you're excited for the update. You guys are probably trying it out. And uh, I'll have videos you know, throughout the next few weeks showing me using some of the new stuff, showcasing other people using possibly the new spells, the new troops, uh, hopefully, and uh, see where this takes us. But I'm excited. I think Clash really has gotten some new life into it, and uh, we'll see where it goes from here. But anyway, like I said, drop a comment if I left something out, and uh, definitely tell me what you think in the comments below. I'll take a look at them, try to respond if I can. Uh, but thanks for watching this one. Probably have a quick announcement coming out just an hour or so after this. So stay tuned for that. Just a quick announcement about the channel. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.